Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nail of the Dawn. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have one last match for today. It's gonna be Randy and Dregs. Randy going for the Rover Factory, Dregs going for the Hovercraft Factory, and we're on Hourglass map I haven't seen before. It's shiny! Wow, that is shiny. Hey, it's got a nice normal map stuff too. Cool. I'm always happy to see good use of SSMF. The like normal maps, specular maps, that kind of thing. I mean, it's a little... It's maybe a little overshiny. I'm not sure what kind of terrain it's supposed to be. It looks like it's almost a swampland. But it's weirdly plasticky shiny. I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to get specular terrain right, honestly. Because <laughs> terrain... Like, ground really isn't that shiny, honestly. like That's not a thing ground is known for, like, grass, dirt, rocks, and so forth. Well, some rocks. But most of it's not really known for being super shiny. So it almost looks like the surface of water, like a swampy, watery thing. Which, granted, the water's right there, so hey, fair enough. Just like, or plastic. Like, this entire ground is made out of plastic. I mean, apologies to the map maker. From, like, honestly, I do think it looks quite pretty. Like, I like the use of that as a map. I think I'm always happy to see it. It's normal map. Yay. Honestly, I kind of wish that people would make maps that were, that were intentionally like artificial, like urban, or some kind of weird like steel thing or pavement or something where it is supposed to be shiny. And like you have the shiny bit, that's like the artificial bit or the built bit, and then you have the natural bit, which is not shiny. That kind of contrast would be really cool to see. You get that a lot of StarCraft Two maps, but you don't get a lot of Zero K maps that do that. Granted, the spring engines only had... I mean, that's worth this for a while, but it's, it is an old engine. There's a lot of old maps that are played. So updating maps for that. Also, the general approach to map making is to avoid... It's to avoid anything that's not natural. Like, focus on naturalistic environments rather than focusing on artificial or, or urban environments. You get a few, like, that are more urban-ish or artificial-ish, like Folsom Dam, but... Not a whole lot, honestly. So, all right, two, three minutes, two minutes, two and a half minutes into the game, neither player is really focusing that much. Randy, despite what I said last game, the end of the last game, they are not focusing on high micro forces. They are focusing heavily on Fencer, the little bit of Ripper. I guess the size of the map is discouraging the players from being too aggressive. Dregs has gotten quite a few of these over here and there. Let's see. Yeah, and it's not nine ish. Nine daggers. That's 900 damage a pop. I mean, easily gets rid of just about everything that's currently built up. The Ripper. No, oh, man, these will not survive. Fencers won't survive. Scorchers won't survive. So, Dreg's going in pretty hard. I mean, the Fencers will be able to hit these daggers from quite the range. So, it won't matter immensely. But still, this is. They all focus on a target. That'll be it. But Randy already prepared. They got the Lotus up and everything. They are good. They will be fine. Oh, okay, so... I should point out, Dregs here is the player formerly known as Sparkles. Apparently they had been using accounts, like other accounts, so they just decided to get the renames. I guess Sparkles is their girlfriend's account? I don't know. But anyway, the... So this is apparently Sparkles. Like, the Sparkles we know and know. <laughs> now, Sparkles is cool. So yeah, they are actually quite strong. So, And as we can see here, the daggers coming in here are very well used, too. Daggers are not easy to use, although admittedly, less focus fire than I would like. There is still some, but daggers require attentive focus fire in order to be effective, just because their entire thing is burst damage. Although I believe these are the slightly buffed daggers that have a bit higher fire rate. Oh, no, not much. Daggers did get buffed, but I think these... Well, this is the latest version, so they are... They are a little buffed. They're a little more expensive, though. I think they're 220 each. No, that's not right. That's not right at all. 75 each. What am I saying? Is that their health? What was 220? Why not 215? Oh, the range is 215. Okay, that's why. That's what was changed. Yeah, there have been a lot of balance changes over the course of the last 
month or so, which might be why there's a lot more players, because a lot of these changes were designed around getting rid of some of the finickiness of the game, which I approve of. Not sure if that's why there are more players on, though. Might just be the fact that everyone's inside because no one wants to get sick. Well, drag switching over to... Also, what do you mean... What do you mean apparently it's a dagger spam meta now, King's Dad? Dagger spam has always been strong at high level. Like, have you not seen... I mean, granted, Golda hasn't been playing this for a while, but... Have you not seen Golda play this? Like, yeah, when you get... When you're strong enough that you can easily micro around daggers... Yeah, dagger spam meta is a thing. Absolutely a thing. Oh, okay, fine step pointing out that they, they play until they fight someone who plops gunships, and then they leave because they find gunships a pain in the butt to deal with. Fair enough. I... I mean... They can be, although Blast Wings have been nerfed, so it might not be so bad now. Or rather, Metal Extractors have been buffed, implicitly nerfing Blast Wing rushes. So, it might not be so bad now. At any rate, there isn't much that Dregs has in the front lines, and actually the dagger's starting to get thinned. This is becoming a bit of an issue. Dregs should be able to hold on to at least some of their territory, but it's going to be tricky. Randy's coming on the side, and most of Dreg's defense forces just scouting out the southeast, making sure that nothing's going in there, or seeing if anything does. A couple of quills will be going down there to help expand. Now, the locusts coming in, I don't really agree with this use of locusts. The, the rippers are going to tear them to pieces. The fencers are going to be nice for support. Oh, but there aren't enough rippers, and the rippers are already heavily damaged, so it may not matter. Actually, it doesn't matter. The Scalpel's doing a fine job protecting those locusts. That will open a lot up, actually. So the fencers are not a huge concern. They go down quickly enough that the locusts, as long as they focus one at a time and aren't being aren't being mobbed by fencers, it's fine. And the daggers are coming in as well for extra support on the ground. So the fencers aren't going to be a threat. Additional rippers would be a problem, but I expect we're going to see crashers, just because that is entity we are, as that is the dedicated anti-air force for the rovers. That opens a lot up. Dregs has completely nullified the assault. Now they can they expand back up here, get it, their reclaim going. Looks like 1,000 metal worth of reclaim, pretty safe for them to claim. And Dagger, Locust Swarm coming in. Should be able to get to the fences. Unfortunately, they did hit a mass of fencers, so several Locusts went down, but not nearly enough. The Ripper, sorry, the Crasher is just now getting up. The Razor's not able to as the Mason goes down, and with that, there is two Crashers, that is all that's coming for defense, but the daggers are on the ground. Dregs was prepared for this. I mean, that's the thing about a mixed force, is that it's difficult to counter. And even then, the number of fencers is not enough. There's a razor, and that's it. The main base is basically undefended. Unfortunately, these daggers are a bit too far behind to do anything. These daggers need to move forward. This is all about splash damage. If all six daggers were together, the fencers would have been one shot each. But unfortunately, they're not, and now they're forced back. Fortunately, because of this, there's still a few survivors, but... Not nearly going to be enough. However, it's not going to be enough to win outright. It is going to be more than enough for Dregs to be able to maintain a strong economic position. I mean, now they're, you know, 51 or now 45 to 30. Granted, they also have the reclaim, and the reclaim is doing a good job, but they're turning that reclaim into more static economy, so it's going to be solidly a lead for Dregs as a result of that, of that approach. Now, at the same time, Randy has gone over to the southeast, but Dregs is well aware of this. And, okay, so it's not that daggers are tanky. Fencers deal 40 damage a missile. So daggers don't have to be particularly tanky. I think they have like 700 HP. Sorry, 300 HP, my bad. Yeah, 300 HP, but it takes, you know, 40 damage per second, or 40 damage takes 8 missiles to kill a dagger. It only takes 6 daggers to one shot a ripper, or one shot a fencer. So it's not exactly even. Fencers do not counter, daggers counter fencers, basically. That's what it comes down to. Now, on the other hand, the ripper... Rippers nearly one-shot daggers. And I mean daggers, plural. But, like, rippers will two-shot daggers. Get a couple rippers, get two rippers in an army, no amount of daggers will destroy them. Granted, that's kind of where the locusts come in, but even then the locusts are vulnerable rippers because they often swarm together and end up nearby. So the ripper splash damage ends up working anyway. And the projectile's fast enough it can hit the locusts despite their constant movement. That being said, Randy may not just have enough economy to really pull this off. I mean, they're constantly being raided out, and Dregs 
Got their Moho Geo oh, a bit close to the base. I don't know. This is... I mean, right now it's not a big deal, but the Moho Geo plant will... I believe the explosion radius will be around here. I don't think it's far enough to take out the fusion reactor, but I'll check once it's done. If it does, if it would take out the fusion reactor, that'd be game if that Moho Geo plant goes down. But right now, Dregs is just slowing down Randy, coming in with the Locust, taking out all the forces coming around the back. The Rippers are going to be a bit of a problem, but the Fencers are not even focusing on the Locust. The Rippers are not focused enough to really deal with them. They are managing to take out a few Locusts here and there. That will thin the numbers, which is good. But Dregs has so much production, they do not care. They're just making Locusts for days on top of Scalpels, which counter Fencers outright. Now, question, of course... Dregs know little. They do not know that Randy is up here. Randy, on the other hand, doesn't really know much that's going on in Dregs' base. Neither... I'm surprised Dregs doesn't know what's going on here. I'm surprised they don't have a radar built up just to, like on this hill or something, just to see what's going on in case anything happens to this worker. Because they have this one constructor that's off in the distance. And it is very vulnerable. I'm surprised it hasn't been taken out. Now, granted, scouting has come through. Dregs does see this force and can't easily take it out. But they do have enough forces over to the south, and they're going to regroup, they're going to be able to take this, and the fact that they know it's coming means that Dregs is immune to the element of surprise, which is the main point of this assault, was going around the back, taking out the economy from the flank, and that's not going to work. Dregs spotted in time. Now, that being said, there is still a force being built up by Randy. They are reclaiming quite a bit, and keeping their economy relatively on par with Dregs, but losing the army like this, that's, you know, currently you know, 1,500 metal worth of attrition in favor of Dregs, that's not nothing. Now, granted, these quills over to the south are running into a spot of trouble, but it's not going to matter. The daggers coming in here will be able to two-shot all these fencers. Oh, but the rippers coming in? No, these quills, the daggers just have to suicide to buy time. These quills have to escape. They have to run around the back, get into friendly territory, because otherwise there's no way around this. As it stands, though, Randy getting assaulted by the scalpels. They realize that the top force... It's done, and Randy losing their commander, a lot of frontline forces, more importantly going to be losing all of these masons if they're not careful. Scalpel's not going with them, though, focused more on the Ravagers. That'll be fine, but once the crashes are down, that would still open things up for further Locust attacks. Granted, at the moment, Locusts are a little bit, a little bit scarce. I mean, they kind of got wiped out getting rid of that last Ripper. But it doesn't really matter. Dregs is absolutely crushing this entire center. I mean, with the commander gone, fortunately for Randy, they were able to reclaim it. They didn't lose all of these workers. I'm kind of surprised Dregs didn't target them. Because the scalpels could have wiped out those masons, no problem. And then this wouldn't have happened, and Randy wouldn't basically be in the same position they were in before they lost their commander. Although, admittedly, a little bit of a harder position when it comes to a forward approach or forward expansion. But Dregs, they need to regroup. They need to get the forces in position so that they can actually fight as a unit. Because right now... Their forces are being streamed in, straggling quite a bit, actually. If you look... Oh, wait, the rover assembly doesn't... Where's the... Oh, the hovercraft assembly, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, the hovercraft assembly is fight-moving everything into the force, which kind of made sense during the fight, but that rally point needs to be changed. Otherwise, Dregs is... I mean, they already lost three scalpels as a result of that. That is 600 metal worth of scalpels. That is not what you want to lose. That actually kind of puts Randy in a position where they can kind of pull this game back. They have reclaimed the commander, which means they basically you know, didn't lose a huge... And they lost something, but they were able to make up for it to some extent. Unfortunately, they their static economy is not really all that present, and their reclaim, it's getting sparser. That was a metal worth of reclaim, but at 13 minutes in the game, that's not huge. Now well, it's, you know, a minute and a half at plus 10, but they need plus 30, and that's, like, you know, 30 seconds of that. And they don't have the workers in place. I don't have the Mason's in place to do that, and only really two left. Scalpels should be able to take care of those. Scalpels and Halberds combined will be able to take care of those, no problem. And actually with the Halberds, it's even harder. Halberds hard counter-fencers. So this becomes an even harder problem for Randy to push through. Right now, that we are still seeing just hard Ravager Fencer. Nothing really beyond that. And Ravagers are doing a fine job getting rid of the Scalpel, so I totally agree with that. It's just, that's all they can really do. And Randy throwing in the towel. Dregs managing just a strong, persistent push when it comes to economy. And with that, taking the game. If you look at Dregs' army value. Wow, they really just were ahead the whole time. Value killed ahead the whole time. <laughs> K 
King said, pointing out in the chat that it's kind of surprising that no Raiders were being made. I... So, I don't know. I mean, Randy's in the chat, so Randy can actually go in their thinking on this match. I'm curious to know what, what Randy was planning on doing, because I do agree. Like, darts could have worked. Scorches would have been tricky against daggers being all around there. And also, Scorches don't do especially well against scalpels. The speeds are quite similar, but darts I could see working out. Like, Dart Ravager I could see working really well to get rid of scalpels. I think the problem is more just that there was so much in the way of the Air Force trying to deal with that on top of everything else was becoming a real problem because, you know, you have this. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it is, that is the thing is like Randy, I honestly kind of think Randy should have added a factory, added air or something. Added air, added some Swifts, use that to take out the skies. And then from there they could use that for scouting, because they were clearly trying to do a lot of tricky maneuvers, but if they scouted that out, it would have been easier to do that. They scouted out, like, where the radar stations are and all that to get an idea of, okay, what does Dregs know? And then work around that. But at the same time, like, Metal Income, oh, Metal Income was pretty close. It was always pretty close. They were never too far... No, no player was ever too far ahead of the other. I mean, Metal used ultimately ended up going in Dregs' favor, but the income, it was only slightly behind. It was just consistently slightly behind for Randy. More the end of the game, really. So, yeah, I don't know what Randy could have done. I feel kind of presumptuous even saying anything. Again, they're in the chat. They could they could talk about their thought process during this. I Honestly, I'd be curious to hear them say what they were thinking, like what, what their plan was, how they were working through this. Like, we're thinking, okay, am I going to just continue to push Ravagers and then that'll, or Rippers initially, and then Ravager Fencer and use that? Okay, Randy pointing out that the gunship switch, that was the thing that gave Dregs the game. And after that, it was just, yeah, the push was gone, the map presence was gone. That's fair. Yeah, that, that really was a huge thing. Especially the fact that the force over in the northwest got spotted early and wasn't able to do its mass raid. That was a backup strategy, but that still got stuffed. Yeah, that Locust Swarm from Dregs really did a lot of work. I mean, late game, I still feel like the economy was reasonably close into the into late game, but yeah, that was, that would have been tricky to deal with. Especially, like Randy's saying, like, trying to sack, they're trying to sack units to stop expansions. It's like, yeah, that, that was a thing, and that's a bit of an issue, because sacking units to stop expansions, you're still sacking units. And there was a lot being expanded. I think if this Quill had gotten killed by the forces that were over here, it would have made a small difference. But honestly, by that point, it was still, we we're in back of strategy territory at that point, regardless. So yeah, losing that first push to the, to the swarm of locusts, and then having them go around the map, raiding out expansions, taking out backup forces and such. Yeah, overall, Dregs really just did a lot of work with the gunships. Anyway, that was that, so hope you enjoyed that. Hope you're staying safe, cleaning, washing your hands, all that stuff. Because we're all in this together, and we all don't want to get sick, so... Uh, hopefully this helped you maintain your sanity during the whole pandemic. But for now, that is going to be it, so... Oops. So, thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.